Good morning, good morning, good morning. You are here with Coffee Chats with Coach Candy. Welcome, good morning. Grab your cup of coffee, your tea, your water, whatever gets you going in the morning. It is Wednesday. Hope you are having a great week. We are in the middle of the week and uh, about to hit things hard. So good morning, Elaine, welcome. Good morning, Martha. Good morning, Deborah. Nice to see you ladies this morning. Let everybody get settled in here for a moment. Hope everybody's doing well. Good morning, good morning. So I'm just gonna grab a little coffee as everybody's getting on here. Good morning. All right. So how many of you took some time yesterday to think about your living legacy? I know, good morning, Paul. I know some of you have uh, done some work with me before in that space, and so I'm curious, um, did you allow yourself to think about how you want to be showing up? What's that living legacy? How to yourself and um, how you're showing up? Because uh, one of the things I want to talk about today is actually um, in response to something I experienced last night and uh, thought it was really powerful. Um, some of you know that I joined uh, the program that Dean Graciosi and Tony Robbins put out, the Knowledge Business Blueprint, which is absolutely one of the best investments I ever made. And, you know, there was a whole campaign going on for it, and they closed it Monday night. Um, but what's interesting is they just keep giving extra bonuses, right? And so I want to have a conversation about how you're showing up. And imagine if you showed up full out all the time, no matter what. And last night was a really good example because we had an opportunity for Tony Robbins to go live just in our group. And he's done phenomenal things to show up um, and be with us. And he was on his island in Fiji, uh, or his place in Fiji, I should say. And um, the technology was pretty bad last night and so the connection kind of was going in and out um, it took him a few minutes to get on and he was just playing full out and what was really amazing to me is while we were on that Facebook live he actually took time to read the the thread and there was 3,000 people on last night I and mean, this was not a small Facebook live so he was going through the thread and realized that whoa people couldn't hear what he was saying he was breaking up the the image was freezing and so he was like doing everything possible. He slowed it down. He was trying to ask people, could they hear him? Could they see? And he was so mindful of making sure that his message was being heard that you even heard him say to one of his tech guys, he's like, okay, we're filming this, right? Because I want to make sure that we're capturing this so that I can share this with everybody. If we're breaking feed, if we don't have this going on. And what was really interesting to me was a couple things. One was how real and genuine that moment was. No matter how big you get, no matter the level that you're playing at, we all have moments that are just human moments and things that are out of our control and it was interesting to watch how Tony managed that he was still in a place of just deep commitment making sure that he could do everything possible he tried everything and anything um, to get the feed going the right way and to which we eventually lost him and then they sent a message right afterwards saying Tony was putting the film together he was going to send it out and it just reminded me that no matter what and some of what we were able to capture from Tony I want to share a little bit today because it's a reminder of you always have a choice you always have a choice in how you show up even when you don't feel like it even when technology is not working to your advantage even when you're tired even when you're worn out even when and so I want you to imagine if, I want you to imagine if you really decided to play full out in every aspect, every day, with heart, with compassion, to show up and serve. And because I love, Tony gets into a lot of conversation around fear. And he talks about how fear is a space where you're totally thinking about you and you're not making it about another person. And so, you know, he talks about people ask how come he doesn't get fearful or afraid when he goes up to speak and he said because when I if I get fearful about speaking then I'm making it about me if I know that I need to show up and share something that's going to be impactful and valuable then it's not about me at all and it's about the people there and it's not and then, then there's no fear and so it's just it was interesting because it was really powerful I mean 3,000 people and what I also loved about it was they've built such a community that while there were a couple people complaining there always is the majority of the people were in a space to say just sending you love we get it thank you for showing up thank you for being committed and persevering through and what I want you to realize is no matter what happens in your life no matter what's going on you have an opportunity to just be real to just be authentic and people are gonna love you because of that 
regardless of whether you get it right. And, and I love that one of the things he talks about is you don't have to be a superhero, right? You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have it go right all the time. I mean, there are times I show up in the morning here and I'm like, well, okay, I'm looking a little tired or looking. It doesn't matter. What matters is that I show up. And what matters is that I'm here. Good morning, Sherry. Here having conversations with you. So I want to talk a little bit this morning about playing full out and where are there some areas in your life if you are really honest that you could level up that you could imagine playing full out on a bigger capacity with more heart and more humility and more vulnerability I mean it was extremely vulnerable for Tony to be so like I don't know what's going on I, I can't figure this out and he didn't get frustrated in it but you could just see that it was real he really wanted to show up good morning Myra he really wanted to be present he really was just in a high energy wanting to give space and was not able to do that in full capacity yet it didn't stop him from just being wide open and vulnerable and putting as much of what he could out there that we could consume and so I want you to think about that in your life Good morning. Um, I want you to think about that. Where in your life do you have the opportunity to step up and stop making excuses? And so it was wonderful because one of the guys in the group actually took some amazing notes. I think his feed must have been better than some of the rest of ours. And good morning, Preston. Great to have you. And so I want you to think about some of these ideas. As we think about that imaginative space, as we think about a space to really, truly push ourselves to be more wide open, to be more vulnerable, to show up um, from a place of love and heart and generosity and not worry so much about am I being perfect what not worrying about ourselves at all only knowing that we're showing up to serve other people and so where and I'd love to hear from some of you guys and we've got some new players on this morning which makes me really happy always love when we have some new people joining us um, would love to know thoughts from you where in your life can you level that up? Where in your life, if you were honest, maybe are you half-assing it a little bit? You know how I talk about, you gotta be full ass, right? Both cheeks in, it's no half-assing anything in your life. And so what I wanna, why, what some of you are gonna chime in, because I wanna hear from you. I'm gonna share some of the notes um, that we captured last night. Uh, from Tony and the fact that like I said his feed was breaking up he was so adamant and he was so committed to sharing as much value as possible um, it just really made me think about are we doing that or do we let noise get in our way do we let the barriers do we let things that are out of our control get in our way or do we persevere and find a way anyway and so I want you to think about failure is, is just a speed bump to success and I think I've talked about this before um, from Joe Vitale's book The Waken Millionaire that he talks about that failure is nothing more than feedback and so I want you to think about that right failure is nothing more than feedback it's simply either giving it's giving you one of three things it's giving you an opportunity to see that okay I want to get from point A to point B and I'm failing because there's a gap I either need a resource tool money person I need something so if you're failing it's an opportunity to reevaluate and say okay what's missing what's the gap how am I gonna fill that space and what's the plan of action I'm gonna take there the other thing is um, failure is also an opportunity for those of you that are spinning too many plates you got 4,000 plates you're spinning all over the place it's an opportunity to drop the plates and let them crash so that you can have the one, two, three, because we only want three priorities at any given time. Remember that from some of our other uh, Facebook Lives together. It's that space to realize, okay, maybe I don't need to be having all this craziness going on. I'm failing because it's not my equation. It's not my plate to spin, and so you can let it go. And the third thing is we fail sometimes because we don't know our full potential capacity or capabilities, and we need to push ourselves to a place to stretch which means we're in the arena, which means we're falling down, we're getting our butt handed to us, and we get back up and we're like, okay, I just need to try that again. And I love some of the videos. Have you seen some of the videos with like the little girl who's trying to jump up on the block or climb the wall? And she's so determined and she's so in a space to be like, by the way, I love that it's a girl. Um, there's this one little girl, she's trying to scale this like pillar in the wall. And she's like, no, I'm going to do it. And even her dad's like, you, it's good. You got up halfway. She's like, no. And she just keeps focusing on it to eventually she like monkey spider climbs up there, spider monkeys up the wall. And it's awesome. And she gets down and she's like, yeah. And so I want you to think about that. Where in your life do you need to take those opportunities that, and know that failure is just a speed bump? It's not the ultimate destiny. 
And even when that failure shows up, are you quitting and copping out? Or are you doing like Tony last night and just putting that extra oomph in there, that commitment, that drive, that way to show up? And so, again, we'd love to hear from you guys. Um, you know, share your thoughts about this. Where are you got some opportunity? And so then I want you to think about this. Stop negotiating with yourself. I love that you talked about this last night. Don't negotiate with your fear. It's amazing how much we let our fear tell us a story that's just utter bullshit, that we allow it to lock us down, hold us back, and we start negotiating with our fear. And the thing is, whatever you give energy to is going to grow. And so if you give energy to the fear, the fear is going to expand and grow versus, and I love this phrase, command it and demand it. And when you decide, no matter what I'm moving forward, no matter what I'm doing this, you stop negotiating with your fear. You let go of the space of thinking that that noise, whatever, even has a say. You're just like, okay, I see you, great, and move right along and persevere and keep that level of commitment high and show up continuously from a place of love and with heart to say, I'm going to figure this out. If this way doesn't work, there's infinite other ways that I can try and allow yourself to keep, keep, focus on the end in mind and really be moving that forward. Um, so whatever you feed, it's the, it's the command and demand at space, right? So feed your certainty, not your fears. That's how you build your confidence muscle. So imagine that for a minute. Imagine if instead of negotiating with your fears, instead of being in a space to say, okay, fears, you win, I'm, I'm done. Start looking and tapping into your certainty. Start looking into the things that you have done well. Start looking at the things that you know that you have this calling or this passion or this fire and start tapping into that because that's going to help you flex that uh, confidence muscle as well and allow you to step up um, from a higher perspective. So again, want you guys to weigh in, want to hear about you know where there's some opportunity for you. We all, myself included, I have things that get in my way all the time. I have noise and places that I have to be honest with myself. I've been playing smaller than I, I should be. And so it's time to level that up. It's time to put more heart out there. It's time to stop worrying about how I look, what the response is going to be, and just know that I need to show up in that space full out with heart. And so, like I said, watching Tony last night, watching this space where it was not perfect by any means. In fact, it was a hot mess. And watching how he chose to show up and stay with it and connect to the people that were there for him and read comments of 3,000 people and try to engage and find a way to connect. Um, it was really powerful to me. And I, again, that was, I woke up thinking, I, I want to have this conversation today. I want to share this with you because I thought it was really powerful. And so really curious as your thoughts as we're digging into this this morning. So here's some other things I want you to think about when you're in this space, right? When you're, when you're, when you're dancing with fear and you're trying to negotiate and, and deciding that maybe that's not where you want to be, I want you to ask yourself, do you focus on what you can control or what you can't? Don't focus on what you have or what's missing. Do, or do you focus on what you have or what's missing? Again, it goes back in that space. Are you focused on all the things you want or all the things that aren't showing up? Good morning, Angie. Um, or are you focusing on what you have and what you can control and what you're certain about? Again, what you focus on expands. What you don't focus on ends up dying and going away. And so if you focus only on your fear, if you're focusing on the stories that keep showing up, guess what's going to keep expanding and keep growing? Or do you move and say, I'm going to focus in this space and get why right now I don't know how to figure that out. I trust, I trust that I have the tools, the resources, the things I need to step into a place to get what and maybe it might be that I need to ask for help. It was amazing watching Tony ask his team for help as the feed kept cutting out, as he wasn't, he was trying everything. He's like, could we move this here? Do we have a backup um, system? Can we figure this out? I mean, he was asking for help real time. And that's one of the biggest oppor missed opportunities for especially most entrepreneurs, but people in general. Leaders as they're growing, one of the most, the biggest opportunities, and this is a space of deep courage and vulnerability, is to ask for help sooner versus waiting and stewing and sitting in your stuff. And so are you asking for help? Are you asking for people to, you know, help you share your message? Are you asking for resources, referrals? Are you asking for guidance and advice from those people that are in the arena that are mentors to you? And when you think about it, we spend so much time um, not 
We think we're going to do it ourselves and we got to be that superhero and we got to fight and we got to claw and we're missing opportunities. Leaders step forward and know how to ask for help. Courageous leaders ask for help. Those that are being vulnerable, those that show up full out, you know what your strengths are. You focus on your strengths and you go find assistance for everything that's not. So Elaine, I love this. Fear can be a time for learning. Absolutely. There are so many ways to learn when we get stuck. Google and YouTube are amazing. Absolutely. And so when you think about fear can be a, fear is just a teacher. And so if fear is showing up. It's kind of like failure. It's just that opportunity to be a speed bump or feedback. Fear is the same thing. Fear is feedback. There is a trigger showing up because either this is something that's really important to you. And so it matters. And so then you start to dance in the space of what if I don't show up this way? What if I can't deliver value? What if I, and you start second guessing yourself because you know that this matters and you know that you want to show up in a way to really serve people. Fear also can be a indicator or a teacher to say, whoa, whoa, that's my next level. Wow. That's going to be big. That's going to require something I don't have right now. That means I need resources, coaches. I need assistance, mentors. I need something, which means I'm going to have to get out of my own way and stop doing what I've been doing now because what I've been doing that got me here is not going to get me to my next level. And so fear is showing up to prepare you for that next step. And so it's all a matter of how you bring, how you accept fear and what you do once it shows up. Fear in itself is not a bad thing. Fear in itself is just like Elaine saying, can be a time for learning. Fear is a teacher and there's real fear. There's things that can be harmful to you that absolutely from an intuitive standpoint, if you're like, woo, that's dangerous, then listen to danger, danger, you know, warning, warning, stranger, stranger, danger, danger, whatever that thing is. Um, or if it's an animal or something that's going to cause you physical or emotional harm. Absolutely, make sure you're listening to that trigger that's showing up. But fear in itself, fear in itself is a story that we're making up. And what I want to remind you of is fear is the anticipation of pain. And so think about what that word anticipation means. Anticipation means something that hasn't happened yet. And so fear is ultimately an anticipation of something in a future state. It's not even happened. And when we choose to give that all our energy and start negotiating with our fear and start getting caught up and swept up in this cycle of fear, what happens is we rob ourselves of the present moment. And so again, I want you to think about imagine. Imagine if no matter what, you declare, you decide to play full out in every space, in every way, every day with heart, compassion, courage, and vulnerability, what would that do for your life? Because we all, and like I said, myself included, I always have places to level up. I teach what I need to learn myself. And so I show up every day with you because something clicked for me. And there was something last night that really clicked. Not only was I just in awe of someone that's playing at the level that Tony Robbins, I mean, there is hands down nobody that's bringing in the money Tony's bringing, impacting the level of people he's impacting. 42 years this man has been doing this, and he had a very humble moment last night where he wanted to pour in so big and was trying everything to persevere through technology challenges to show up full out. And that's somebody that doesn't have to play that that level, right? But for him to get one-on-one -on -one with us, for him to get in the trenches with us, for him to bring us into the arena with him, is such a beautiful demonstration of real leadership. And I want you to think about that. I want you to think about the kind of courage and humility. I mean, because Tony could have easily, easily said, you know what, not working, guess what? Catch up with you guys next time, just didn't work. Instead, he, I mean, we were on there for a good 20 minutes trying to really get this to work. And he's just like, I'm going to, they're filming the whole time I'm talking. I'm going to send this out. You guys are going to have access to this. I want you to have these tools, these techniques. And he found a way to get around it. And just, I loved, he went through all those messages and all that feed and was responding to people directly was in there. He's like, tell me if you're seeing this, am I clear? Can you, and he was so concerned that his message was being carried and received. Um, and that's something that as you've seen, you've seen people as they grow that oftentimes they forget about quote the little guy. They forget about the people that help them get there. Their, their community is so big that they're detached. And I love that for a program like this, Dean and Tony have been showing up every day. There's 15,000 people in this community, and I'm not joking. I think there was 15,185 that signed up for this based on the email they sent out. And looking at the group that's on there. So for them to play full out with 15,000 people like that and make it feel like it's a one-on-one -on -one level 
that's an opportunity for all of us. When we can make people feel like they're, you're reaching in and you're connecting at a heart level. And so I want you to think about that. I want you to stop questioning yourself. I want you to stop questioning your value. You have value where you are at right here, right now. Stop making excuses for stepping forward. Stop making excuses for playing a bigger game. Stop making excuses for opening your heart and being vulnerable and sharing your message. And I don't care what you're doing. I don't care what role you have. I don't care what job you have. I don't care what business you have. I don't care if you're a stay-at-home mom. I don't care if you're a stay-at-home dad. I don't care what your function is. You have something to share, something to express, and you are worth Putting that forward because somebody needs you right now and you know that I've shared this with me before that there's three questions good morning Cherie there are three questions that when you are not showing up for people I want you to think about who's not being served right now somebody needs you no matter where you're at somebody is watching you and you are their role model and yesterday when we talked about living legacy I talked about as Ken Blanchard says whether you want to or not or believe it or not you are leaving a leadership legacy you are leaving a legacy every moment you engage and interact with people you're leaving a legacy by showing up here every morning because there's pieces of this that you carry out and you share and you lead it forward and you shine it forward and I want you to think about that where can you level up where can you as I love Cherie saying reaching in where can you reach in lean in and where can you elevate that so that you can truly play full out in every aspect of your life because when you are not playing full out somebody is not being served you are taking somebody's permission away and you are not letting other people shine their light either and I want you to know that that is the reality when we are all about ourselves when we're negotiating with our fear when we're in this space where it's about me 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 instead of about how can I serve 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 and so I think about like I said, watching that last night, I was just in such awe and such a reminder because I've been disappointed over the course of my lifetime with people that I've kind of revered as my gurus, people that I have admired, I love, and then I've seen them in a live capacity or I've seen them in person or I've met them. And the way they show up is incongruent. It's out of alignment with this perceived authenticity that they put out there. And for someone like Tony Robbins to show up last night and be all heart, all commitment, all in, that just makes my eyes water. I just think about those are the people that I want to model. Those are the people that inspire me because it also gets into something, and you can hear Peyton barking, um, something around some of our money issues and value issues and self-worth issues is we feel like the more money I make, the worst person I become or I lose my sense of how to be humble and real and and show up for people and when you watch someone like Dean Graciosi who's who's brought in a billion with a B dollars in sales and Tony Robbins who's brought in multiple billions he's one of the richest people in the world and to watch them show up both of them and pour and be wide open and be vulnerable and be courageous and not be perfect yet still show up and play full out. I don't know about you, but that inspires me. People like Brendan Burchard inspire me. Brene Brown inspire me. These are people that show up from the depths of authenticity, from the depths of their heart and compassion. And so I, I really urge you and invite you to think about how you can level up your own game. Imagine if you decided that no matter what, you were going to play full out. No matter when the haters show up, no matter when the, and we're going to talk about haters one day too, as I'm going to talk about why they're the best thing that could ever happen to you as you're putting that message out there and you're trying to lean in. Or yes, and Cherie, thank you for that. We're going to talk about that more too. Stop feeling guilty for your abundance. Here's the thing. Without abundance, without prosperity, you can never play your game full out. Our entire world, Man is, is based on money and how money, the exchange of energy in that space allows us to build communities, feed the hungry. Think about Tony Robbins. He fed last year for five years in a row. He's fed 100 million mouths of, with food because of his Feeding America um, 
campaign, uh, nonprofit, whatever. Good morning, Sharon. So I want you to think about that. I want you to think about the fact that abundance, prosperity, first of all, are your birthright. We were put here to have abundance, to do our life's work. And without abundance, without prosperity, without wealth, and wealth being your health, your spirituality, your emotional wellness, your physical wellness, your money wellness, without wealth, you can never play full out and live in a capacity. And so it's that space of getting really connected to your mission, getting really connected to your purpose. And your mission might just be, I want to show up and be the best person I can be in my community. I want to be a loving person in a world of hate and entitlement and judgment and blame. I choose to be different in that space. And I'm going to allow myself to attract what I need to play a bigger game there. Maybe it's helping your community and capacities. Maybe it's raising money for something. Maybe it's giving back. Because the thing is, is when you are really in a space to position who you are and what you have, you're not selling. What you're doing is you're having people emotionally connect to something that lifts them up and brings them value. And we, every single one of us, has a moral obligation for that. I am going to say this again and again. It's one of my favorite quotes of all times, and it's by Jay Abraham. And it says that if you truly believe that what you bring has value for your clients, and I always say for people, for for humans in general, for the world, then you have a moral obligation to show up in every way possible and share that. And I want you to think about that. Are you putting yourself in a position to share that full out, to share that with courage and vulnerability and compassion and generosity and love? We need more love. And it starts with you loving yourself. It starts with you stopping the negotiation of fear. And so I want you to think about stop the habit of thinking that you got to feel good. You got to be motivated. Do it anyway. Show up. And that was one of the best things that Tony said. And here's the thing that you guys need to know. He has been traveling recently. He's been doing his UPM. He's been doing his other events. And he recently lost a third of his blood in his body. For those of you that don't know, Tony has some health issues. He's had a lot of things going on. It's one of the reasons why he's seven feet tall. He has a condition and things that he's lived with for a majority of his life. Um, and so he literally, he was in, was he in Sydney when this happened? I don't know, he was traveling. And um, he was hospitalized and lost a third, a third of his blood. His hemoglobin levels are so out of whack. And so he still, has shown up and done his events. He's still showing up and doing Facebook Lives with us, and he's still only at about half capacity right now. And I want you to think about the fact that when you have curveballs and life's throwing you stuff, are you allowing yourself to just get hit, knocked out, and cop out? Or are you truly saying, no matter what, I'm gonna show up? And some of you saw a message, and this one is gonna get me a little teary-eyed, because this is such a space that I wanna light a fire under you, and I really do believe that is one of my missions, is to light a fire under you so you can light a fire with it. And um, a dear friend of mine passed last year, and she was struggling with cancer. And I had sent a message out to uh, you know most of my list uh, when Janie died. And um, what was interesting to me is she was, so in so much pain with her cancer and still in her final hours as one last way, oh, I'm gonna cry, one last way for her to show up. She did a video. She put a last message out to the world because she wanted to make sure she left with nothing in her. And I just think about how many of us cop out on stupid shit. We cop out on stuff that's not even meaningful. We cop out on things that are just bullshit and we let all that noise and all that bullshit and all this stuff that means nothing stop us from stepping up and sharing our gifts and sharing our message and so if anything i hope you're hearing me a little bit this morning because like i said i was so blown away last night and it truly it gets into my heart it gets into my soul when i recognize how powerful it is for us to make a decision to make a choice to show up every day, to show up and play full out. And if you ever have to ask yourself, am I playing small? You already know the answer. And so my wish for you, my my invitation for you um, on this amazing Wednesday morning is that you reach in a little bit. You lean in. You get really honest with yourself. You go back to the conversation yesterday around living legacy and ask yourself, am I creating the right living legacy? Am I creating something that's really impactful and influential and affecting change? Am I showing 
up as my best and highest version of myself and am I doing it in a place where I don't care if I'm perfect I know that I'm gonna fail and I'm still gonna be wide open courageous and vulnerable because if you're not now is your opportunity and, and I, I cannot stress that enough I, I stop waiting stop waiting if you remember yesterday I love that oh thank you Cherie uh, receiving and um, you know we talked about the dash yesterday the average lifespan in the US is 79 I know I'll be 46 this year. There is not a lot of opportunity when it, at 50 you have 2,000, you have 1,500 weeks effectively available at the age of 50, if that's the average lifespan. And I look at my family who not, I don't think anyone in my family has reached 79. And so when I think about that, there's a lot of work to do and there's no space for me to cop out. And so I hope, I truly hope that you will say yes to yourself um, so that you can say yes to other people, so that you can get out there and lead from a place of deep love, that you can step into a place to know that leadership's a choice and um, truly start playing a bigger game because there are people that need you right now. And I, I'm here. Let me know how I can support you. Let me know what you need. Um, and if you want another dose of how to step into that space, um, make sure you go out. We've got a new episode of the podcast uh, being launched today. Go out, check it out um, on iTunes, the Powerhouse Podcast. It's where I get to have conversations with other leaders and talk about how we get to show up and what it means to overcome that space of fear and those, those um, setbacks and those trials and those tribulations and how we make choices to move through that um, anyways. And so with that, just know that I am always here loving on you so hard. Um, you're all in my heart, sending you deep heart to heart hugs. Uh, I trust and hope that these um, sessions every morning are, are valuable. Um, again, if there's things you want to get into, if there's conversations you want to have, let me know. I'm wide open to what we can talk about um, every morning. And as you can tell for those, some of you that have been with me for a while, I'm going deeper. I'm going to push you. I want to put, I want to light the fire underneath you so that you can truly light the fire within. And I'm going to leave you with a thought. And again, this is uh, one of my favorite sayings, and I, I have become known for this saying. I, I close all my events this way. I want you to realize that you don't know who, you don't know how, and you don't know to what level you can affect influence or impact change for another person simply by showing up. And my invitation, my urge, my, my challenge to you is, how big are you willing to show up? And I hope today it's going to be full out. So with that, I love you all so much. Thank you again for joining me um, this morning. Uh, let me know if there's anything I can do uh, to, to move this forward for you. would love to hear from you. And uh, until then, I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.